Well, let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, and thank you for taking time to join the webinar from wherever you may be working this afternoon. As an independent uh, chartered chapter of the American College of Healthcare Executives, San Diego Organization of Healthcare Leaders is authorized to award one hour of ACHE qualified education credit towards advancements or recertification in the American College of Healthcare Executives for this virtual program. I have been with Seoul um, for many years. My name is Jack Hallmark, uh, and in conjunction with my colleague Lydia, uh, we lead the programs and events for Seoul. And let me have her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Lydia, and I work for UC San Diego Health. I've been an active ACHE and Seoul member for approximately seven years now. And again, it's always a pleasure and honor for myself and Jack to be with all of you today in this during this afternoon. In the next couple of slides, we'll be providing an overview of Seoul. So Seoul's chapter at a glance, when you join ACHE, you automatically become a member of the San Diego Organization of Healthcare Leaders, also known as Seoul. Being a member provides you a local connection to ACHE where you can receive learning, networking, and volunteer leadership opportunities. Currently, Seoul has approximately 500 members. At Seoul, we offer many programs and events throughout the year. Currently, we are only offering a program's events virtually. However, we do hope to offer in-person events in the near future. In the next month, we are offering two more programs on one on June 5th. It's our monthly graduate student council networking one-on-one -on -one event. And on June 9th, it's our equity of care where we'll be providing or earning 1.5 hours of face-to-face -face education credits. To get, most, to get the most updated news and events of Seoul, please follow our social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Lastly, we also want to recognize our Live Well San Diego partner in partnership with County of San Diego. Now I'll turn it over to Jack to present our two speakers for this afternoon. And I'd like to also take a moment. Uh, some of you in the audience today are representative of Seoul's annual sponsors. We want to introduce you uh, to our current 11 platinum sponsors and one gold sponsor, tell you why they are so important to us and why we appreciate them so much. It's very simple. We can't do what we do without the support of our sponsors. Soul members are both aspiring and established healthcare leaders. As a chapter, we are very energetic and ambitious with a lot of dedicated people. Until the pandemic, we put on about 10 programs or events and networking opportunities annually for our members in the community an executive program, a mentoring program, a program to help prepare aspiring leaders prepare for the ACHE fellowship exam. All of this activity is capped with our annual conference. What you may not be aware of is that approximately 45% of our revenue comes from sponsorship. Sponsors support us, help and truly do what we do. So on behalf of Seoul, thank you for your generosity. Marco Hernandez is an IBM services client executive focused on healthcare and life sciences for Southern California organizations. Marco has worked at IBM for 20 plus years in various technology roles. He has a passion for helping organizations achieve their goals through technology driven solutions. He holds a BS in business administration, information systems from SDSU, and a master's in technology management from the University of Denver. John is a IBM analytic solutions architect with over 20 years of experience in the architecture, design, and implementation of analytical systems. A prescriptive analytics evangelist, John is considered a thought leader in decision optimization and hybrid cloud architects with extensive experience in helping Fortune 500 companies establish their data science and optimization strategy. He holds an IBM and master's IT architect certifications along with BS in marketing degree from Florida 
Metropolitan University and a mechanical engineering degree from Gama Filo University in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Marco, and let's take it away, John. Hi, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for the nice, int nice introduction. Um, we're going to talk about today, um, I, I tried to get a very quick um, summary of what's going on in healthcare, especially in data uh, analytics, and um, I had I got a lot of questions about AI. So how, how can AI and all the analytics can help uh, healthcare nowadays, especially after pandemic? So let's go through it. Um, so uh, I'm, I have a few slides that um, you know, pretty obvious to you guys. And actually I included the, the slides to serve as a future reference for your reading pleasure later on. But it's something that might be not surprises of everybody here. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the healthcare course uprising, uh, the model optimized for business outcomes and all out patient outcomes, meaning, uh, next slide, please. There is, um, um, there are a lot of emerging uh, technologies that have uh, they have the potential of taking uh, the industry to a whole new level. So IBM um, has an internal um, um, institute that we call the Institute of Business Value that um, it track that and interviews a lot of executives in the healthcare and many other industries. And um, they interview and, and, and compile this data and also produces a very comprehensive report of what the CEO, CEOs, and other executives in, in your field uh, are thinking about it and think will be important for the future. So, um, you know, 75% of them feel that, you know, optimistic that the cloud would take them somewhere uh, in, in, the, in the point of care decision making. And we actually, I have some already evidence of that uh, later on on my slides. And, um, and new business models obviously will, will have to be adopted, especially after the pandemic. Next. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this is, uh, it, it was, uh, there are several, um, uh, takeaways from this presentation, and uh, this is uh, one of them. So I will let you know, uh, you know, if you have to remember anything about this presentation, this is one of them. So uh, if you see in, in, in uh, the horizontal line is time, a uh, vertical uh, axis will be a value. So uh, if usually uh, enterprises today, and I'm always talking about the healthcare organizations, uh, they going from the operational um, part of analytics or data analytics, meaning, you know, just tells me what's going on, you know, it reports for what happened last month to now um, they started to warehousing their data and start running a little bit more business intelligence around that data. The next step, uh, if we're going from left to right, is the self-service analytics. Meaning uh, now I'm going to get this data. I'm going to I'm going to get something um, a smart out of there. I'm going to get um, uh, uh, dashboards, uh, more sophisticated analytics um, to to uh, socialize the data among obviously the people that have the the the, the, the permission uh, to see that type of data. And then uh, you know the the natural step would be AI, which is will be completely new uh, business models. Um, AI. Uh, which stands for artificial intelligence, will help you make decisions, right? Organization will make it smarter decisions. And in my opinion, um, it will help you discover uh, things that, and tendencies that you, you, you have no idea it existed, especially it, uh, it's a deep knowledge. I call it almost like a, a, a therapy <laughs> of your organization uh, where AI is telling you all the problems and all the potential that is in there uh, that you can uh, extract if you uh, uh, if you tap into it. Next. Sorry for the delay. There's something. It's just it's taking a second. That's okay. That sometimes that's what happens with Zoom. 
There you go. So this is an alert, right? News alert. Uh, despite all those efforts, uh, most of data rich and information poor, what that means. So you have this wealth of information in your organizations. I mean, it's, it, I work with the, in, in the industrial sector, the transportation sector. I work with clients uh, um, in, the, in the travel industry. And uh, every time I, have, I work with a client in the healthcare industry, it's incredible the wealth of data, untapped data, that it's out there and uh, nobody's doing anything with it. And, 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 and nowadays, the more data you have, the more power you will have to make much better decisions and will be, um, will be able to make uh, better predictions about your, uh, your business, especially in staffing um, uh, um, service, uh, uh, customer care and um, uh, purchasing uh, supply chain, all those aspects, uh, the analytics can uh, can bring it up, uh, especially when you have a a comprehensive strategy of, um, um, of looking at your data, organizing your data. So uh, if you look at uh, the little graph there, right, uh, the knowledge worker he spends um, 20, 20, 22, 23 percent of their time looking at data, which is just supposed to be almost like a hundred. Uh, especially business analysts. So they, data scientists uh, are looking at it, but as, this is not being socialized. So this is, um, there are several reasons for that. The, the, the data sources are very uh, 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 dispersed, which is, happens all the time. All the clients that I visit, I, I have never seen a client that had a, a very um, a nice and organized single uh, truth um, of data uh, is stored in, in a single uh, uh, place. It's everything is spread all over the place, all the, over the organization in different formats, uh, different systems. So it's, uh, uh, this is the core of the problem, right? So data is always the, uh, the, the base in which we need to work on to get to the next level. Next. So, uh, this is, uh, again, a lot of references here for your reading pleasure, but uh, the missing opportunity, it's uh, one of the, the biggest uh, issues here. So uh, if you look at the very first quote there on the, on the right-hand side, 90% uh, of the player data lakes will be useless. A data lake, um, it's actually a very good thing. If you have a data lake in your organization, it's fantastic because that means that by definition, a data lake is a, it's a reunion of uh, uh, the, all the data that you have in your, in your organization from customer service chats, from uh, structured data like in databases and patient data and, and uh, um, uh, clinic performing data, uh, medical staff. You, you have all of this, uh, you, you finally got to the point that you organize all this data and, and you dump into a single repository. It's fantastic, but it's useless because um, uh, people, 90% of those will be, uh, the people will be overwhelmed with information assets and you, you don't really know what to do with it. And, and that's a, that is a very good, uh, that is a solution for this. Next. So, and uh, within our environment in, in the industry, and in, especially in IBM, we say there is no um, artificial intelligence without information architecture. So that, right, makes sense, start from the bottom. So um, do, again, during the IBM uh, research with the uh, um, uh, executives on, on the healthcare industry, 81% do not understand the data needed for AI. So what do I need to get, to get a artificial intelligence process? And especially the, the end goal here is to embed, right? Infuse AI in your day-to-day -day business. So when you're making a decision of, of setting up an appointment, AI is helping you making that decision. Uh, when you um, want to make decisions about purchases on the supply chain side of things, on a back office, uh, AI uh, is not making a decision for you. It's actually helping you making that decision uh, based in some information that you probably didn't know it were there. 
So, um, so then you look on the flip side, right? The, the AI pioneers that we call the outperformance in the industry, um, they, are, they have very robust data architecture. So you can create very, um, and that's the MIT quote there is pretty obvious, but you, there's no amount of AI algorithm sophistication that will overcome lack of data. So if you don't have a good data, um, you know, you, you may have a, the most um, intelligent data scientists and staff, but if you don't know uh, how to get it, that's, that would be a disaster. Next. So we, we have this, and most of the industry agree that this is uh, the ladder that you must climb to uh, achieve AI and all its benefits. And I'm gonna talk about the benefits in a minute because you might, you might be hearing me talking about AI here and AI this, AI that, and okay, how exactly this is going to, uh, to help me and my organization. So the latter is if you, you first, we, we help you get this data collected and make everything accessible and organized. And that's very important. I think the first one is the most important of all the steps. Then you organize the data, you create all the analytics um, uh, infrastructure that you need. And then you analyze the data and you validate, and that's very important, um, just because the computer is telling you uh, something that um, you know, it's, it's there doesn't mean it's valid, right? Uh, you need to figure out if that's valid, their mechanism to, to check and recheck the validity of uh, the results or, or whatever the predictions that um, the system is telling you. And then when all the three steps, the first three steps are done, you infuse AI uh, throughout the, the um, gradually, but the, the idea is to infuse AI in pretty much everything that you do in the enterprise. Next. So the benefits is there is, is now looking more, you know, focusing more on the healthcare industry. Um, so it's, there are several aspects. This is just an example. So. You, you get a, a, the complete patient data, and then uh, your profile cleans the data. And that's the, the, the number two, the phase two there, it's important in the fact that you need to create curated glossaries uh, for data classification and also uh, establish regula regulatory compliance on all your data. So some people are not allowed to see some things. So uh, what I'm talking about here is not opening the data for everybody to see. That's not that at all. There's, there are a lot of um, mechanisms that exist today, um, automatic, including AI, to uh, substitute terms to uh, replace a certain expressions that some people are not supposed to see and others will be able to see automatically. So um, you the, the idea here is uh, when all the decision makers have access to the same data and trust the data for that matter, um, time and opportunities to make improvements are quicker than ever. And I have a set of examples here uh, to show the next. So there are three, um, three main pillars of modern analytics. Obviously the data, the predictive, which will you know, help you tell you what may happen in the future, and the prescriptive, which is actually tell you what to do. It's uh, prescriptive is one of my specialties. It's uh, actually a, a, a developing science. It's been around for a while, but it's being uh, caught up now, especially in the healthcare industry into once you have um, a, a lot of, uh, of the, the predictive indicators, the specific and prescriptive, I'm sorry, analytics will tell you what to do. So. Uh, just hit uh, next three times there because they're going to show the three balloons. Uh, there you go. So uh, let's say data would be your care management, claims data, call center data. Uh, so the predictive now, it's risk scoring, right? So what's the, uh, the uh, especially, for example, in, in terms of the financial systems of healthcare, uh, benchmarking your services, uh, cost and quality measures of physician performance, so for example, you can, um, uh, and I've done this for a few clients, uh, we go through AI, we, um, we score the physicians and all other staff, physicians, nurses, everybody else for that matter. You create the scores, the periodical scores on their performance, and then you use a prescriptive, uh, you use the, the, those scores 
to influence the smart scheduling, uh, the strategic planning. Uh, where the, you know you can create simulations. So what if I de you know uh, deploy certain pr professionals in a different time slots and you know based on your um, uh, traffic or uh, perceived traffic or predictive traffic. So all those three work together to give you a very smart vision of the not only of the, the past, but the future, which is more important, right? It will guide you on what to do, uh, all the, the, the smart decisions to make uh, in the future. Next. So again, we talk about this, uh, the data, and uh, um, I'm not gonna talk much about this. Uh, you guys probably know there uh, as, as well, or maybe better than I do, uh, but we're talking about you know, scheduling, the admission discharge transfer, we're talking about claims data, we're talking about, you know, broker member portal, call center. Uh, so there uh, uh, um, a wealth of data as we're talking about that uh, healthcare organizations have. And that's what we're talking about. The last paragraph there is very important. We're talking about knowledge catalogs. Knowledge catalogs are the services there. This is technology, this is pure technology that goes through uh, and powers the AI and the machine learning uh, models to categorize and curate all your knowledge assets. And you create relationships between them and establishes rules for who can see those uh, the, the data and what exactly do you want to see from the data. Next. So the next pillar, right, predictive analytics. So from there you have uh, you know, the overarching uh, science is artificial intelligence. Uh, so you teach the computer how to do something in the computer. Um, the system will go all there and, and look for the things that you, you were trying to figure out. And machine learning, actually, you, it, the, the, the software as, uh, uh, assimilate all what you learn from artificial intelligence and is start finding things and learning about your data without you telling it what to do is actually really learning uh, certain uh, uh, behaviors and, and what to look for without you telling it to look for. And then deep learning is even even deeper. It's it's talking about neural network. It's something uh, they are um, at this point, in my opinion, on our, uh, very few um, organizations have the, even the capacity or are in the stage that they can use deep learning but it certainly uh, give you um, a lot of business benefits. Next. And the last pillar will be, oh, let's talk about auto AI. Yes, a lot of people ask me, but John, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning, this is um, sometimes complicated. You know, we need the special people to do this. Well, not really. There are um, auto AI um, software out there. They allow you to actually it will read the data for you and, and ask you a few questions and then we'll create its own AI model. It's, so it, it's actually an introspection uh, process that <laughs> it, 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 the artificial intelligence uh, software will actually create its own model and start uh, obviously asking the user a few questions. And now it's gonna start looking for data without you writing a single line of you know programming code or model code, um, there we have several examples uh, on, especially on the IBM Cloud on this, and that's fantastic. Uh, it's one of the best features that uh, the IBM Analytics Suite has today. Next, next. Now, decision optimization will be our next, our you know very last pillar. So, what is optimization? It's uh, again, it's it's. Uh, um, it's just improving decision-making. They use software uh, and a, a, a very smartly written models to give you explicit recommendations for action. So next. Uh, so why we use optimization? Uh, next. So here's an example. If we have to make a decision about, you have a truck and the truck have to deliver goods in five different locations, you have 120 different routes. So that that is not a too bad of a uh, uh, you know process. Uh, just five locations. Let's say you a transportation manager, uh, you're going to make those decisions. Uh, imagine you know uh, you can extrapolate this to your own industry. But 
Uh, but even just five different locations, they give you 120 different options of routes. Next. So now if I double the routes, next, now all of a sudden you have 3 million routes. Now things got really complicated, right? Next. Hit it again, please. Uh, so now if you double again, um, now they're, the possibilities are endless. So you just 21 different locations, all of a sudden you have you know, trillions and quadrillions of, of possibilities that you can route that one little truck, one truck to 20 different locations. Next. So decision optimization is, is it's, it's exactly that. It's, it gathers, you know, it, it follows you through the um, AI ladder. Uh, so the business intelligence, next. Go ahead and hit all three times. There you go. So the business intelligence, it tells you what happened. It's like your, your uh, odometer on your car telling you, you know, how many miles you covered. Predictive analytics then will tell you, you know, how many miles you have before you run out of gas. And optimization is actually a recommended action. It's the GPS. It's going to tell you what to do. So you, you start from the bottom, go all the way up and to reach the, what I call the analytics nirvana. Next. So the one complements the other. So in predictive analytics, you, you grab your sample data and you, you train a model. So the, the a model that you created now is being trained to understand your data and get observations. And all of a sudden you have your, your predictions, your pattern, your classifications. So you have all this data that the model discovered from your data. Next. So now you can inf infuse this, those patterns, pretty much like I was talking about the, uh, if you want to classify your doctors by efficiency or by um, um, uh, uh, rate of care or any other uh, indexes that is important to you. Now this, those uh, indexes and score can be infused into uh, your uh, business uh, prescriptive analytics and create better decisions and schedules and plans. It really is, is it really is transforming. Um, we've been working with this in the transportation industry, and a lot of uh, healthcare um, uh, industries in Europe, and this has been a, a game changer for everybody. Next. So a final thought on this, and I, I gave this, I, I put together this slide just to to give you a complete idea from the AI ladder, and on the very right you can see. Uh, the output of the AI letter, right? So when you collect data, so what do you have? You have, now you have the data governance. At the end of this data collection process, you have centralized data, you structure it, and unstructured data. Now you can have data sharing among your data scientists and so forth and so on. Next. So there are several benefits out there. Um, uh, I'm gonna leave this there for your, for your references. Um, there are uh, several documented cases, uh, especially with IBM, um, um, the healthcare uh, partners and other clients that we work with IBM. We work with the, with a research, a sepsis research pilot with IBM uh, and Highmark, and it was fantastic results. Um, uh, and uh, the, the third bullet from the bottom there tells me what I need to know. Um, uh, they only have to impact 42 patients to show the financial benefits of the investment. Um, next. So we have a three user case next. Um, I, I'm not gonna talk extensively about it, but it's, uh, again, it's for your references. Uh, it was about monitoring um, uh, the, the, the quality of care. So this is a hospital in Canada it was very, um, uh, interested into um, uh, monitoring the quality, what's going on, especially uh, especially in Canada, they get um, a special uh, bonuses and incentives from the government based on their performance and based on what the public is telling them. And um, so the 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 had redesigned its analytics architecture just to provide insight to the decision makers. So it wasn't. Uh, it, it wasn't revolutionary, it was evolutionary. It was just a matter of producing uh, new powerful visualizations and, and other um, 
uh, uh, performance outcomes, deeper insights for to, to make better decisions. Next. Um, yeah, we talked about this already. Next. Uh, that is also a very important case of uh, the Cal Medical. Um, there was just, they, they wanted to improve the clinical outcomes and drastically result the administrative and clinic inefficiencies. Um, the uh, IBM Disc Care Discovery, it's a system based on analytics, 100% based on analytics, that it changed the way they were doing business. But basically, they had to uh, re-engineer what they were doing from the ground up and, and put the focus on improving outcomes. And that's important because in in machine learning and all those analytics, you can uh, you can set your objectives, right? So what is what's your objective to find something? And in this case, the objective to find something was improve customer care. That's that's what they they were looking for. Uh, so they had a, a incredible impact on the on it. We I have the full case. Any of those cases I have the the full cases has been published. It's out there on the internet. If you need uh, um, more information, please let us know. Uh, next, I think that's it. I'll give it back to you, Marco. Thank you for it, by the way, and I'm sorry for speeding. No, that was so good, fast. John. Thank you, Marco. Well, th thank you, uh, thank you, John. And um, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. yes. John, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll have, a, let's go into a q and A if we could, please. Um, let's spend uh, maybe five minutes on that. And if we don't get to all the questions, uh, you can certainly reach out to me directly and then we'll make sure we load uh, my contact information for folks to, to contact me after the presentation. So are there any questions we can entertain at this time? Yes, Kelly, we're planning to load the, a copy into the website after the, uh, after uh, later today. Uh, this is Barbara Gerber. This is, mm -hmm. okay, this is Barbara Gerber. Um, I was just wondering, you know, in looking at this and I, I'm just a little bit familiar with AI having taken a, a rudimentary course in it. Um, it seems like this would take a long time as a, as a project to really uh, get get together. And I'm assuming that obviously will be uh, how large the organization is, how much they want to do. But is there any kind of price range in terms of starting something, your, something simple in a, AI? You want to take that? You want me to take that, Marco? Go ahead, John. And, and I can add to it. Oh, that's an excellent question there, Barbara, because, um, uh, you know, I, I hate the, the, the consultant answer, right? Depends. <laughs> but in reality, uh, we have, uh, I'll, I'll tell you uh, what my experience has been. We've been, there are projects that uh, take um, 90 days. In 90 days, we have uh, uh, something to deliver the client. Obviously, uh, and the the more the client, right, the more the organization invest into the to the outcome, the faster and the cheaper actually it is because um, we are training your own uh, uh, technical folks into you know into uh, uh, how to process the data, how to collect, how to you know create models, yada yada yada, yada all to all the way to the end of that ladder, right? So if you if you, the more the organization invest with us, the cheaper it gets, the faster it gets completed. Uh, we have uh, several cases, uh, and I can I can send you a few of them that uh, we completed in ninety days. Uh, we have uh, especially at IBM, we have a this group called the Data Science Elite Team that for, at no cost that team will come to you. Uh, uh, a set of, uh, set of goals, right? We do one session, we, do, we establish a set of goals, we establish what you want to do, and we map what you need to do, and we get you going. We grab your hand, right? It's a lot of hand holding. Uh, we give you all the information that you need to do. And then after that, we just follow you through your path. 
Uh, so on, on the very beginning of this process, uh, it's of no cost to get you your picture of where you want to go. So it's really, you know, a, a, a win-win situation in my opinion. Did I answer your question? Um, that's all right. I was a consultant myself, so, so I understand how difficult it is to, to answer that. I was just thinking of a, a client I had at, at one time and how this might have been helpful. And I would just have to ask you personally what something like that might have cost. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's very difficult Hi, to, to, uh, to, to price something like that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. It's Lydia. Um, we can answer one more question, and then we could move on to our next part of the program, which is our networking program. So I believe Mike, Ryan had a question, and it's how do you address the diversity in data? It's been reported 71% of data sets comes from three states in the U.S. Marco or John want to answer that, and then we can move on to the next part. But there's a simple answer to that, AI. It's actually... Um, it, and the latest uh, interaction of our analytics uh, suite, uh, we actually address, if we go further than that, right? We go also to the data bias. Uh, so let's say I create a, a artificial intelligence model or a machine learning model with the best of intentions, right? I wanted to figure something out and I wanted to discover something. And then the results come to me and um, and I noticed there's some bias on, on, on a specific uh, um, topic or a specific answer. You know, it's always, I, I work with several clients that that happens. And it's not, uh, you know, malice, uh, it's not incompetence, it's just a matter of how the data is in, interpreted. So IBM is now infusing AI to remove data bi bias all the, um, uh, from all those, uh, you know, AI processes. So once you're done, you and actually there's a second step that you go through it, and then we'll we'll help you uh, uh, give you indicators of data diversity. Uh, we we'll give you indicators of you know of uh, you know using too much of this data, much less of this data, or you giving too much importance to one thing or the other. So that's a very interesting topic. Thank you for bringing that up. All right. Thank you, John and Marco. We are grateful to have you both here today. And thank you, John, for giving such a well-rounded information about healthcare artificial intelligence. So um, for any questions, we're going to give Marco Hernandez information after the presentation if you have any other questions for the IBM team. So now we would like to move on to our networking session. While Jack sets up the breakout rooms, I will provide you instructions about them. Everyone will randomly be placed in one or two breakout rooms. In two breakout rooms, in the breakout room, you'll be accompanied with one of our sole members, either Sarah Norwood, who is our sole treasury co-chair, or Pranav Dixit, our sole diversity, equity, and inclusion co-chair. They'll be asking a series of ice a few icebreaker questions to get the discussion going about healthcare intelligence, artificial intelligence, and you'll have a total of about 20 minutes to get to know and network with each other and potential ACHE and SOUL members. Once Jack finishes up setting up the breakout room, you'll receive a notification to join the room. Um, once you join it, please click join and I'll direct you to a designated breakout room. Um, when you have one to two minutes remaining, you'll receive a notification when to start heading back to the breakout room. John is, I mean, John, Jack is the breakout rooms all ready to go? Yes, they are. All right. So you guys can join the breakout room that's been assigned to you. And we'll see you back in a few minutes. Great, everybody. Hope you enjoyed your networking session. I'm going to go ahead and close out our event uh, today. Special thanks to Marco and John. Really appreciate your time and, and sharing uh, all the incredible work that IBM is doing. And for those that might have noticed the article in Sunday's paper, uh, it was on page three if you get the hard copy. And it was a nice uh, section in the Motley Fool area about Big Blue and Big Green in terms of their efforts and clearly a reference to um, IBM being on the cutting edge with artificial intelligence as a 
developer of AI applications. So excellent um, information about the organization. Um, just wanted to give you a heads up and, and make note of saving a, a date for some of the upcoming events. And you can expect more reminder emails coming from our networking team members. We've got the GSC monthly networking event taking place. We also have the equity of care event we made reference to at the beginning. Uh, also next week, expect uh, an opportunity to provide feedback to us with a, a link to the survey. We're also going to be sending out a list of all today's attendees to have that for your networking uh, collection and follow up. And also equally important is qualified education credits or self-reporting credits. So ACHE does not require you to submit a sign-in sheet for qualified education units. Uh, you basically just need to self-report it using the My Education Credit uh, within the My ACHE profile page. And more importantly, if you can't find it, simply contact ACHE customer service. Uh, also, um, we also just most importantly, again, want to thank uh, all of you for joining us today. And we really look forward to seeing your names and faces at more events later this year. Thanks everybody. Thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Have a good one. Nice Bye. to meet you all. Be safe. Nice to meet you. Okay.